As the old saying goes, no one stays dead in the world of Marvel Comics except for Uncle Ben. Resurrections have really come back into fashion with comics after a brief, apparent flare of popularity 2000-ish years ago, but not every Marvel superhero or villain has been the recipient of a decent resurrection. For every well-conceived revival that inspires engaging new storylines, there's an equally confounding and frustrating one that inevitably makes readers ask why this character was even even killed off in the first place. But in the meantime, I'm Will for What Culture, back from slaying whites beyond the wall to bring you five Marvel resurrections that were done right and five that sucked. Bad Resurrection number five, Johnny Storm, AKA the Human Torch. As the youngest member of Marvel's first family, the Fantastic Four, Johnny Storm, AKA Human Torch, has long been portrayed as an immature show off, the superhero equivalent of Peter Pan, the boy who wouldn't grow up. During his acclaimed run on the Fantastic Four in the late 2000s, writer Jonathan Hickman finally forced Johnny to grow up. In Fantastic Four number 587, Johnny sacrifices himself and protects his teammates from a wave of invading aliens and is presumed dead. Storm is then revived eight months later in Fantastic Four 600. In this issue, we learn that Johnny was kept alive by insect-like creatures that were implanted in his body by the villain Nihilus as a means to open up a portal to the negative zone. Johnny's resurrection wasn't poorly conceived as much as it was painfully obvious and anticlimactic. It came at a point where Marvel was seemingly killing off and reviving a new character every month. Additionally, because Fantastic Four ended at issue 588 and a new series FF took its place, many readers assumed something related to Johnny would happen within 12 issues in time for FF to be renumbered as Fantastic Four 600. It made the whole storyline come across as a cynical story stunt by Marvel to rekindle interest in the Fantastic Four franchise. Good resurrection number five, Hawkeye. The death returned death again and returned again of Clint Barton, aka Hawkeye, might sound a bit convoluted on paper, but it finds its way into the resurrections done right side of the ledger based on the unique circumstances of the revival, as well as some of the really interesting stories Hawkeye's return generated. After Wanda the Scarlet Witch goes crackers and makes a Kree warship appear in Avengers 502, Hawkeye is killed during the ensuing battle when his quiver of exploding arrows catches fire and he sacrifices himself by grabbing onto a Kree soldier and flying into the engine of the aircraft. We don't hear anything from Hawkeye for another six months when he's mysteriously resurrected in the House of M miniseries as part of an alternate reality created by Wanda. Hawkeye knows nothing about his death until the heroes receive a collective wake-up call and discover that they are all living in this alternative timeline. Hawkeye confronts Wanda and shoots her in the back with an arrow before he is uncreated again and killed. What makes Hawkeye's eventual resurrection special is the visual readers get in the last installment of House of M. As Captain America and the new Avengers are walking round the remains of their old Avengers mansion, Cap discovers Clint's costume along with a newspaper article announcing Hawkeye's death pinned to the wall with an arrow. After that teaser, Marvel made readers wait another few months before bringing Hawkeye back for good. That moment comes in New Avengers Volume 1, number 26, when Hawkeye once again seeks out Wanda. The two share an intimate moment together and Hawkeye is finally able to let go and move on with his restored life. Bad Resurrection number 4, Jean Grey. During the iconic run on Uncanny X-Men, Jean is assumed by the cosmic power of the Dark Phoenix Force. At one point, the Phoenix Force is so hungry for energy, she destroys an entire planet, killing billions. She eventually regains control of her body, but finds herself battling with the Phoenix again and commits suicide to save her teammates and the universe from the deadly cosmic force. Reportedly, writer Claremont never wanted to kill off Jean, but was forced to develop some kind of severe punishment for her after Marvel editor-in-chief Jim Shooter was outraged by the fact that the longtime heroine had fictitiously killed off an entire planet of people. The muddy circumstances around her death ultimately impacted her revival six years later in Fantastic Four 286. At that time, Marvel was looking to capitalize on the rampant success of the X-Books and had developed a new series, X-Factor, which would feature the original lineup of the uncanny X-Men. Marvel editorial had to come up with a way to revive Jean that would satisfy Shooter. Reportedly, Kurt Busiek 
Beck, before he became a renowned comic book writer himself, pitched to Marvel an idea of Gene being enclosed in a cocoon on the bottom of Jamaica Bay in New York. As for Gene's suicide, it was explained that it was really the Phoenix Force impersonating her during the storyline. These ideas were adapted. As convoluted as it sounded, Jean's return was made even worse by the fact that she just kind of appears in Fantastic Four and then in X Factor. The gravitas of her Shakespearean-like demise was cheapened. Good resurrection number four, Norman Osborn. The death of Norman Osborn, aka Green Goblin, aka Spider-Man's deadliest villain, is considered a seminal moment in comic book history. Fresh off of killing Peter Parker's girlfriend Gwen Stacy and ending the Silver Age of comic books in the 1970s, the Goblin then inadvertently kills himself when he is impaled by his own glider. Norman stays dead for decades, though his legacy carried on through his son Harry, who becomes the second Green Goblin. Osborn also inspired other copycat villains such as the Hobgoblin, but there was never any inkling that Norman would return until the final installments of the reviled Clone Saga arc in the mid-1990s. Osborn shows his face in a comic book for the first time in years at the end of Amazing Spider-Man 418, and then dons the Goblin costume again for an epic showdown in Peter Parker's Spider-Man number 75. That's when we learn that Norman faked his own death and had the glider scar on his chest to prove it, and was the mastermind behind the often frustrating clone saga. He survived those wounds due to his enhanced strength from the Goblin serum. Also, the issue where he confronts Spider-Man for the first time as the Green Goblin again is one of the best best Spidey comics from the 90s, and Norman would go on to be the focal point of many other classic stories involving Spider-Man and the Avengers in the years that followed. Bad Resurrection number 3, Elektra. Arguably the greatest creation from Frank Miller's initial run on Daredevil, Elektra was Marvel Comics' original and most popular femme fatale. As a former lover of Daredevil's alter ego Matt Murdock, Elektra turns to the side of Eagle and is a hired assassin for Wilson Fisk, the kingpin of crime. She eventually suffers one of the most iconic deaths in comic book history when she is stabbed with her own sigh by the psychotic bullseye. Miller would go on to tease her resurrection during one of his final issues of Daredevil, but she remained dead. Elektra would eventually be revived for real during the bloated Fall From Grace storyline during the 1990s. In the end, her resurrection was a bit random and done only because she was a popular character, not for the sake of a good story. Good resurrection number three, Colossus. A central member of the second generation of X-Men who debuted in the legendary giant size X-Men number one, Peter Rasputin, aka Colossus, died a noble death in Uncanny X-Men 390 when he selflessly injected himself with the deadly mutant killing legacy virus, allowing the cure to become airborne. Colossus stayed dead for more than three years before he was finally revived as a part of the opening arc of the legendary Joss Whedon, John Cassidy run on Astonishing X-Men. Demonstrating why the Weed and Cassidy tandem is so highly revered by comic book fans, the creative team just absolutely nails Peter's resurrection. At the beginning of the Gifted arc, the X-Men learn that the mysterious Benetech Laboratories is conducting tests on a mutant that was believed to be dead. Some of the members immediately think that the mutant in question is Jean Grey, who had been killed around the same time as Colossus during Grant Morrison's run on New X-Men. Instead, in an absolutely gut-wrenching scene, Peter is discovered by his former love, Kitty Pride. The plot moves on with several twists and turns from there, but the fact remains that this was one of the most interesting and exciting resurrections out there because of how Jean Grey was teased for such a long time before the big twist Colossus reveal. Bad resurrection number two, May Parker. Peter Parker's Aunt May had basically been on her deathbed since she was first introduced in Amazing Fantasy number 15 way back in 1962. Still, despite the constant threat of May dropping dead, she managed to survive for nearly 40 years until the extraordinarily sentimental and tear-inducing Amazing Spider-Man number 400. In the issue, May, who had been in a coma for months, revives for one more day with Peter. During this day, she tells him she knew he was Spider-Man the whole time and later peacefully dies while Peter kneels at her bedside. As a part of the final chapter storyline in the late 90s, the Green Goblin reveals to Spider-Man that he hired an actress to get plastic surgery and pretend to be May in order to trick Peter and wound him emotionally. He then announces that he installed a chip in May's brain that would set off a genetic bomb if removed. The story is so far-fetched that even Spider-Man, who was fresh off the Clone Saga, didn't believe it. Sadly, it still happened. The story breaks nearly every rule of credulity, plus it undid a true masterpiece by one of the greatest Spider-Man writers of all time. 
Good resurrection number two, Bucky Barnes. For decades, Bucky Barnes, Captain America's sidekick and best buddy during World War II, was as dead as it gets in comics. His death in an aeroplane explosion that only Cap managed to survive by being frozen in ice would go on to haunt Captain America for the entirety of his time in the modern Marvel Universe. Through the eyes of Cap, various creative teams would go on to give us Bucky-centric flashback stories and hallucinations, but Bucky was always dead. And then the creative team of Ed Brubaker and Steve Epting went ahead and did it. Yup, they resurrected Bucky as part of the 2005-2006 Captain America arc, The Winter Soldier. To be fair, thanks to the MCU, y'all know about Bucky's story by now. But still, The Winter Soldier is such an iconic part of Cap's history that it's easy to forget it's only 13 years old. Bad resurrection number one, Heroes Reborn slash Heroes Return. Desperate for any kind of financial spark it could muster after filing for bankruptcy protection, Marvel did the unthinkable in 1996. It killed off many of its most popular properties such as the Avengers, the Fantastic Four and Doctor Doom during the crossover event Onslaught Marvel Universe. Marvel then outsourced the Avengers, Fantastic Four, Captain America and Iron Man series to early 90s artists who had defected to Image Comics a few years earlier, Jim Lee and Rob Liefeld. A year later, Marvel ditched Lee and Liefeld and brought the production of the Fantastic Four, Avengers, Captain America and Iron Man series back in-house. To explain away the past year of comics, the Heroes Return miniseries shows that Franklin Richards, the son of Fantastic Four member Reed Richards, created a pocket universe where all of the heroes who were assumed dead existed until they were brought back from limbo into the mainstream Marvel Universe. Good resurrection number one, Captain America. The original superhero resurrection story, Captain America's reintroduction to the Marvel Universe in 1963 is considered a seminal moment in comic book history. Cat was created by Joe Simon and Jack Kirby during World War II when Marvel was known as Timely Comics. Two decades later, the Avengers discovered Captain America's frozen body. In this story, which is featured in Avengers number 4, the Avengers learn that, towards the end of World War II, Cap had fallen from an airplane into the North Atlantic Ocean, where his body remained in a state of suspended animation. Consistent with most of the other heroes Stan Lee and Jack Kirby were creating in the 1960s, the Silver Age Captain America is a darker character who is haunted by his past and constantly struggling with being a man out of time. He would be killed off again in the mid-2000s during during Civil War, but would be revived again in time for his new movie in 2011. Still, nothing tops the significance or gravitas of Captain America Lives Again.